basketball team won its conference title in 2008 and 2009. So far this season, the Bulldogs are on pace to make it three league crowns in a row. KOMU 8's Brian Mortensen shows us why the Bulldogs are unbeaten. 20 wins and no losses. Trey Chisholm anchors the Bulldogs. The senior averages over 14 points per game to lead the team, but remains humble about his role. Just get everybody motivated to play. That's, I'd, I'd rather share the ball than score, so it doesn't matter. As long as everybody's motivated to play, and I make sure everybody just knows the offense we're running and the defense we're running, that's all I do. It's a good leader, you know. It makes it easy for us. Just take easy shots, gives the ball around, get rebounds, run it a little bit. Part of the Bulldogs' success this year stems from their five-plus years playing together. Us, the five starters, we've played together since we were in seventh grade. The whole group has been a real joy to coach. They're a group of guys that work very hard, uh, get along well, coachable most of the time. Sometimes they have their issues, but overall, uh, it, it's a real joy to have an opportunity to coach this bunch of kids. But Coach Bisher points to a college football coaching legend for advice on how to keep his team focused, even with the undefeated record. I heard Lou Holt say one time, uh, win is what's important now. And so we, uh, we just focus on this next practice, next game. That's what we focus on. We don't... Brian Mortensen, KOMU 8 Sports, Moberly. The Sturgeon boys basketball team completed its regular season with a perfect mark, 25-0. KOMU 8's Catherine Lopez looks at the game that motivated the team to set its goals so high. Although the Sturgeon basketball team finishes the regular season with a perfect record, it's still not perfect enough for them. Well, if I'll clarify, it's a perfect regular season so far. We've still got hopefully several games to play uh, if things work out, but you know, a perfect regular season just isn't done to me. But what motivated these team members this season to prove something to their school, fans, and most importantly, themselves? Flashback to last season, Sturgeon met Harrisburg in the district championship. I don't like to say it, but I remember the most is the Harrisburg game district championship last year. We lost by one. I mean, think back to that and it drives us. That one point drove the players back into the gym during their summer break to lift weights, get stronger, and improve their game, both individually and as a team. That any time over the last nine or ten months that we were working and somebody maybe was not doing quite what they should have been, uh, all we had to do was bring up that game and it brought everybody's attention back to where it needed to be. Coach Boucher says that Harrisburg game was the fuel to the fire that helped get the boys over the hill and headed into the playoffs with a perfect record. Catherine Lopez, KOMU 8 Sports, Sturgeon. The Sturgeon boys play Slater Tuesday night in the first round of district playoffs. 27-0 Sturgeon against Fayette. It fits him in John Reed and Moberly. Sturgeon Dominic Johnson passes to Corey Hicks and he nails a three as the Bulldogs build a big early lead. And more Sturgeon early in this one as it's Garrett Kelly Domit on the inside. He finished with 23 points. Fayette would keep this one close though. It's Christian brought us with the nifty move. But once again, Kelly kept the Bulldogs ahead. Another layup. Sturgeon still perfect. 70, 70 to 64 win. Oh, really happy. Uh, kind of scared at the end because they started hitting a lot of threes, but it's it's fun. I'm just happy, excited. Uh, teammates really picked me up coming down the stretch, and uh, they were there for me. Really tried picking me up. I just kept picking the ball to the basket, hoping I'd get over the hump. Same arena. Same arena. Teams 29 and 0. Sturgeon playing 28 and 0. Wellington Napoleon, his point guard for uh, Sturgeon, Dakota Reeves, who actually puts it in. Two two Bulldogs. Then it's Hicks to Reeves again, this time for the long pass as he puts it in, 4-2 Stur Sturgeon. Then it's going to be Trey Chisholm finding Dominique Johnson, who lays it in for Sturgeon one more time. And then just before the first quarter is over, it's Chisholm again pulling up and hitting the three. And Sturgeon goes on to win this one, 66-61. Sturgeon will play Thursday at 140 in the Hearn Center. That's right, Hearn Center. Home, the Sturgeon boys basketball team had a perfect 30-0 record heading into its state semifinal game today with Clever, a school located south of Springfield. The game played at the Hearn Center. Back to the Hearn Center for some hoopage. Fans fired up.
With that T-shirt toss and fired up for Dominic Johnson, who nails a three, Sturgeon by seven at halftime. Then another big play by Johnson. He gets the layup to go. Sturgeon with a double-digit lead heading into the fourth period. Clever tried to fight back. Jeremy Dressler with the score, but with a minute to go, Dakota Reeves puts it up and in, and the Sturgeon Bulldogs win to advance to the state title game Saturday. Bulldogs, it will be senior Tory Hicks, junior Dominic Johnson, where's number five? Trey Chisholm, senior guard, Garrett Kelly's inside, and Dakota Reeves. Meanwhile, for the Bernie Mules, it will be Jake Welch, number 22, Jacob Owens, Jordan McGowan, Jeremy Walker, and Jake Smith. And now with the play-by-play, -play, here's B.J. Schulte. The Bernie Mules will be in their road blue uniforms with some white trim. They'll be going left to right on your computer screen, and... Smith on the inside, both average 14 a game for Bernie as the Sturgeon Bulldogs to try and get on the board. A minute and a half into this Class 2 championship game is Dakota Reeves on the left side. Gives the ball off for Kelly. As the Bernie Mules play man-to-man -man defense, Dakota Reeves dribbles down the left side of the lane, kicks it back out for Chisholm. As they try and get some rhythm going offensive, offensively as Chisholm drives, kicks it back out for Kelly. Gets inside the paint, kicks it back out. Chisholm a long three-pointer left wing. He answers a three of his own. Makes it 5-3. Chisholm was left open. They dropped off him to try to stop the penetration. He drilled. It'll do it for the first quarter. 21-14. Sturgeon on top. And Dominic Johnson can really create some offense for his team, both for himself. And he's also picked up a couple of assists, especially right there. Lane Aaron's open on the baseline. And the subs off the bench for Sturgeon. Taylor Wells comes in, knocks down a three. Lane Aarons was in on a couple different aggressive plays. He scored the final basket that was set wide up by Johnson, but he's grabbed a rebound. That's what you want when substitutes come in off the bench. They contribute in various ways to your team. And in that first quarter, Coach, we had five ties, one lead change, but Sturgeon on quite a run to end that first quarter now have a seven-point lead. They do. As you can see, they have been able to Control the offense the way they wanted. 21 points is a high-scoring quarter. Side, we'll talk about the first half. We'll come back and have second and half action. It's going to be a great second half. We're underway as Torrey Hicks, Dominic Johnson, Dakota Reeves, Trey Chisholm, and Garrett Kelly will start the second half 
for the Bulldogs. Here's a nice high low. Reeves able to find Kelly down low. Makes the layup, and he's fouled. What a nicely drawn up play right there. Well, Bernie comes out in a zone, and quickly Sturgeon doesn't take long attack, and a pass from the wing, the high post, the low post, boom. Kelly lays. They're doing a nice job getting the ball in the diagonals. There's that nice diagonal pass once again down low as Reeves will kick it back out for Johnson. Over for Hicks, doesn't look to shoot a lot, gives it right side for Chisholm, he'll drive. Nice dump down low, layup up and in for Reeves. I don't think you're going to see Bernie stay in his zone very long. Sturgeon is much too comfortable against that zone. And you'll have to hit a cut in McGowan, jump shot right elbow, can't get it to go, Chisholm with the rebound. Nice moving off the ball, nevertheless a good look from the elbow, just missed a shot. Johnson in transition, will pull the trigger just inside the three-point line. It's a two-pointer, rattled home for Dominic, Dominic Johnson, makes it 46-44. Johnson with 13 points. And here going baseline, Owen, spin move, lost his balance. That's got to be a travel, and it is. And that's one thing we didn't talk a lot about either coach at halftime, the turnovers. Both teams uh, took care of the basketball. That's just the sixth turnover for Bernie, only three for Sturgeon. And we've played uh, into the second half now, approaching 20 minutes played in this game. Fundamentally, one of the best games we've seen in a long time. Here Johnson in the corner for Garrett Kelly, holds the ball. Now he dribbles, looking for movement, and you're right, the Mules switch back to their normal man-to-man -man defense. As Torrey Hicks will dribble between the circles, 5.05 left third quarter action. Two-point lead for the undefeated Bulldogs. Here's some fancy dribbling by Dominic Johnson. Doesn't get him anywhere, kicks it back out for Kelly. Three-pointer is good from the left side. Yep. Kelly really demonstrates his range as he nails that three-pointer from about 24 feet. And McGowan will try and answer. Owens, good skip by Smith, picks up the assist. Owens now with 15, and we're tied again. It's 49 all. They give Owens that much time, he can really knock him down. He's got 15. He has nine ties now and just one lead change. So what a championship game here in Class 2. 2010 Show Me Showdown as Reeves from the right elbow. Back out for Kelly. Jabs up, works up against Smith. Gives it across for Johnson, and he knocks down the jump shot. That's a two-pointer just outside the left elbow. Makes it 51-49. Now Johnson has 15. Three different picks up the personal foul. Now check that. They might have given that one to Jeremy Walker. They flashed out number 54 up on the scoreboard. And it is on Walker. So now three team fouls for the Mules. No fouls yet on the Bulldogs in the second half. 3-10 left third quarter. And here is Chisholm trying to break down the defender. Gets by McGowan, pulls the trigger from the free throw line, and rattles home. Nice move by Chisholm. And he seems to be much more effective when he does that instead of settling for the long three-pointers. He appears there, just leaving everything out on the line. A great effort by both teams here tonight. Bernie Mules have had a very strong program in the last couple of years. They're disappointed they did not make the Final Four last year. So they don't want to miss out on any opportunities this year. They're down here at Mizzou Arena. 53-51, Chisholm down the left side with the left-handed layup. Nobody picked him up, nobody slid over, and Chisholm all the way to the basket. He now has 16, that's a game high. It's in 15, and Garrett Kelly has 11 points along with five rebounds. Listen to the crowd over there for the Bernie Mules. They're on their feet. Class two championship game, fourth quarter underway, two-point ball game as the Bulldogs trying to finish the season undefeated. They trail by two. Garrett Kelly top of the key, left side for Hicks. Hicks holds the ball. Waiting for movement, finds Kelly. Kelly gets it back to Johnson. Johnson will try and tra attack the basket. Instead, gives it inside. Reverse layup, up and in. Taylor Wells, what a pass by Dominic Johnson. That's a set play. Wells comes off a weak side pick, fakes a cut to the perimeter, uses a pick, comes underneath, lays it. Will dribble baseline, gets to the left block, goes in for the shot, got it up over top of Kelly, but I think Kelly changed that shot just enough, so he missed it. Hicks in transition. Here's a three-point shot. Taylor Wells just knocked down a reverse layup. Now he drains a three, and it was contested. That gives Dur This was seven minutes ago, 6.57 to be exact. But, you know, I think I smell OT in the air around here at this possible situation. Each of these teams is so tough internally, they're not afraid to take that open shot. If it's inside, they're not afraid to make the pass. They use picks. You can see off the ball the picks against the Sturgeon zone or setting up the perimeter shooters. They aren't just getting open. There's a lot of inside picks being made by the post players who are sacrificing themselves to make the pick to set up the shooter. And the same thing happens for Sturgeon, as these are two well-drilled, well-coached, very, very good basketball teams. 
And so we'll go back as you hear uh, the crowd. Sturgeon Bulldogs fans like it. The Bernie Mules fans, well, they hate it as it's Tory Hicks, Dominic Johnson, along with Taylor Wells, Chisholm, and Garrett Kelly on the floor in this fourth quarter. Nice pump fake. Chisholm pulls up from the jump shot and it rattles home. Great use of the pump fake. 217 left. 29 points for Trey Chisholm at 77 to 74. As the pace continues to increase, I don't know how that's possible. If they are, they're blistering up and down the court. Let's look at the timeout situation. Sturgeon has three timeouts remaining. Bernie just two timeouts. Bernie has been called for 10 fouls, so Sturgeon will be in a double bonus. Sturgeon has been whistled for seven. Therefore, Bernie will be in the one and one situation. We're starting to see the sub situational substitutions occurring. So the fouls can be made defensively. We're down to 217. What a ball game, B.J. Schulte. Have to tip your hat to him. Puts it up. That one's short, but he does give the Bernie Mules a five-point lead. Chisholm comes down with a loose ball. Dominic Johnson re-entered the game. Kelly on the right side, left all alone. Long three-pointer. Count it. Count the three. You lead cut to two and a quick timeout. That was from way downtown. Garrett Kelly drained it. He has 14 points, and... It's all of a sudden back to a two-point deficit. Kelly just in, touching the ball for the first time in quite a while. Many times you tell your youngsters, well, don't take that three until you feel like you're in the flow. That sure did not stop Garrett Kelly. He took that pass, and you could see he set his feet. He eyed it up, and boom, drilled it. And it cuts the lead down to two points as we're having a terrific scoring. You see the fans are all involved in this game. The cheerleaders have an easy crowd to lead in cheers. Bernie Mules have a large contingency, as do the Sturgeon Bulldogs here. In the Class 2 session, both boys and girls, I think we've been here both weekends, has been the most entertaining. The semifinals were unbelievable over at the Hearn Center. You can hear the crowd here today. It's just outstanding the amount of people that have jam-packed into here. We have already crowned an undefeated championship in Class 2 girls. Sturgeon going for it as Garrett Kelly just knocked down the big three-point shot. Cuts a lead to two. He's here as Welch runs the baseline, gets the ball in for McGowan, right back for Welch. Maneuvering through traffic, gets up into the front court, under two minutes left. No need to foul for Sturgeon. They've cut the lead back to two. Ball tipped out of bounds. Garrett Kelly thought it was off of Owens, but they'll say stay with the Mules with 148 left. Ball inbounded for Welch. Back out for Owens. Gets it across for McGowan. 140 left. They don't need to foul or pressure Chisholm. He has four fouls. He's got to be careful out there. As pass over for McGowan and picking up the foul. That's yeah, number 14, Lane Ahrens. Will pick up the personal foul, his fourth. And it should be the 10th team foul. That should be double bonus now. On that possession, B.J., I thought that the Bernie offense was a little tentative and they were forced out of any type of aggression towards the basket. You could see it was the Sturgeon defense that looked confident and aggressive. Let's see what happens here as now the foul situation becomes so relevant. And I'm to be corrected here. It is just a ninth team foul. McGowan's free throw front end. Very important. He makes the free throw. Puts the lead back up to three. Now with 27 points and... 17 of 20 for the Mules from the free throw line. That's 85% as McGowan will try and make it a two possession game. Puts it up, two possession, 80 to 76. Chisholm again, same situation. They don't have to panic. Still 130 left. Just get a good shot. Chisholm will pull the trigger though. Left side and he drains the three from three feet beyond the three point line. Cuts the lead to one. That's two straight long three pointers. And for the Sturgeon is here, Walker double team trying to split through the double team, kicks it out for McGowan. We have a ball game, 80 to 79, 115 left. McGowan, middle of the floor between the circles, gives off for Owens. Still trapping, Chisholm knocking away from behind to Johnson. Uh, Chisholm down the right side, can't get the bucket to go. He's fouled though, as it's too loud for the kids in the crowd to hear the whistles, but there was a foul. Chisholm. He very dangerously with those four fouls reached in. He got all ball apparently, tipped it loose to Johnson, return pass from Johnson as Chisholm ran the floor, and he was fouled going to the basket. He will have two shots. He has 32 points. How about that long three-pointer he just knocked down? 
And further, as he had his breakaway layup, he slowed down and used his body to draw the foul. So even if he missed a shot, he was going to give himself the opportunity to shoot some free throws. Left it short. That was the fourth foul that was just called on McGowan. As Chisholm is 11 of 14 from the free throw line. As a team, they are 18 of 24. And Chisholm trying to tie the game at the free throw line. Takes his time. You can see he takes a couple dribbles, takes a deep breath, looking to tie the game for the 16th time. And he does. The free throw rattled home. It's all tied at 80. We were tied at 40 at the half. One minute left in this 2010 Class 2 championship game. The crowd stands up on their feet as Jake Welch on the left sideline works against Hicks. He's drawing a count. Now it's not drawing a count as he backs off. 45 seconds left. Will the Bernie Mules just try and milk this clock all the way down? Will they be allowed to? Down to 40 seconds left. Bernie coaching staff's instructing their players to spread it out. One timeout left for Sturgeon. Two timeouts left for Bernie. Clock ticks all the way down to 30 seconds left. Owens. Dribbles inside the three-point line, back out, weaving through traffic, drives, dumps it down low, Walker, pump fake goes up, knocked loose, McGowan can't get the put back to go, Kelly with the rebound, 20 seconds left. As Torrey Hicks with the ball, we're all tied at 80, 15 seconds left, up into the front court, Hicks, will they use a timeout? Not yet, 10 seconds left. We're tied at 80, they spread the floor for Trism, down to six, crossover dribble, spin move, Wendon Lane goes up for the shot, it's blocked for the foul! There's a foul with 2.8 seconds left. They wanted to spread the floor for Trey Chisholm. He's been able to beat any defender off the dribble. He has 33 points tonight, and he has a chance to knock down a couple of free throws. Going to the bread and butter play. It's carried the entire second half. That sound coaching from Coach Greg Boucher. He put the ball in the hands of his hottest shooter, Trey Chisholm. Goes to look for a free th uh, timeout here. As Chisholm again takes his time, he's shooting 80% tonight, 12 out of 15, free throw up, good! And the Bulldogs lead by one. And now Bernie will use their fourth timeout, they have one left. As the crowd applauds, as what an atmosphere, this is just jam-packed here at the Mizzou Arena. 2.8 seconds left to be exact, Sturgeon leads 81 to 80. Now for Bernie, they could be drawing up two scenarios. If he makes it, if he misses it, with just 2.8, if he misses, you're not going to have a lot of time. If he makes it, they may be able to get the ball up further up the court and use another timeout, but there may not be enough time for that either. With 2.8 seconds, generally there is a reaction time that's per minute. There's a one-second reaction time generally, so if you inbound the ball, you probably don't want to take a chance of calling another timeout because you've lost at least one second takes you down to a second to go. I think you're exactly right. They'll be drawing up an inbounds play on a basket and on a miss, on a basket. Now, I would think Sturgeon, meanwhile, is gonna put up two guards defensively to stop that first long inbounds pass to make an inbounds the ball in the backcourt and then stay away from them. They're gonna clear the lane, Coach, as the other four players will come off the lane as Chisholm. And they'll be there to stop that outlet pass if there's a miss. They'll line up right next to the guards make the guards break back away from their basket and you can see the directions being pointed out by the sturgeon coach he still continues to yell instructions and as chisholm puts the free throw up it's good 82 to 80. 2.8 seconds left well bernie will burn their final timeout trey chisholm has 35 points tonight 35 points we'll have to check the record book and see how high up he is on on the floor is inside the half court line. They're all in the front court. Here comes the play. McGowan still looking. Lobs it up top. Lobs it for Walker. He's going to find Owens. A long three pointer. Owens! No good! It hit the rim! The Sturgeon Bulldogs have a perfect season. They win 82 to 80. They are the Class 2 state championships. They finish with a 32 and 0 record. What a scene. They storm the court. But credit the Bernie Mules, a well-drawn-out play. They had the guy they wanted to shoot the ball from the left sideline. He got a clean look. It was about 30, 35 feet out, but it was a clean look. It hit the rim, no good, as the Sturgeon Bulldogs become our second undefeated champion of the day, the Class 2 girls champion, the Harrisburg Bulldogs, finish their season undefeated, the Sturgeon Bulldogs, 